curious to find out more about that. All right. So today, in the book of John, chapter 3, We notice a little, something's a little bit interesting. It's a conversation in the dark is what the message is entitled. But as you know, deaf people can't communicate in the dark, right? So anyway, when you think about the point of this, we're thinking about this specific person by the name of Nicodemus. What's his name sign? Do we have one? We'll just use this with this. Okay, Nicodemus. Or we'll use that. Okay, so that's his name sign for today. Instead of spelling out the whole name every single time, we'll just use this for his name sign. Anyway, okay, go ahead, next one. And in John 3, in this chapter, there's a conversation, and it happens between Jesus and a Pharisee named Nicodemus. Now, you need to remember, Pharisees did not like Jesus. Because Jesus, he did miracles, he helped people, he preached about that the fact that he was the son of the living God. And Pharisees didn't like that. Pharisees liked people who would look at them. They were very much, well, holier than thou. They had an attitude. They wanted everybody thinking about how amazing they were and that they worked for God. And they wanted everybody to look at them and think, wow, look at you. They were very pious. And Jesus would say, mm -mm, we need to take a look at your heart. Your heart is full of pride. He would say that as he would look at the Pharisees. And they didn't like that. But... Nicodemus, he heard Jesus speaking one time, and something resonated with him inside. And he kept thinking, I really need to talk to Jesus. But if the other Pharisees saw me talking to him, well, that's the reason why he had to go at night. Because in the dark, nobody would be able to see him. And he would be able to meet and discuss it with Jesus. Because Nicodemus had, he had a lot of questions that he wanted to ask Jesus. And he thought about his life. He thought, you know, something just isn't right. So he talked with Jesus. That's what the story is about today. Okay, next one. So Nicodemus said, he went to him and he said, Rabbi. That, which, which means teacher. Okay, so he said, we know that you are a teacher and that you come from God. No one could, this worm here, work, perform the signs, do these miracles, these amazing things, unless, if, unless they were, if God were not with them, it'd be impossible for them to do that. So Nicodemus, he knew that Jesus was definitely special. Something was different about him. Okay, next one. And Jesus answered him. Truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are, they are born again. Hmm, Nicodemus, Nicodemus thought, whoa, wait a minute, born again? I've never heard of somebody doing that. And Nicodemus simply did not understand. Born again? Huh. We have to think about that. Born again. Well, how can we be born again? We were born one time, right? We are just born. We're just, we can't come back and be born a second time. That doesn't make any sense. And Nicodemus thought, hmm, okay, now wait, just take a break here and think about this. Sometimes 
we sit in church and we think, okay, uh-huh, and the person's preaching and preaching and we're listening. And sometimes we just, well, it just doesn't make sense what's being preached. Most of the time we're like, okay, yeah, whatever, I didn't understand it, but we move on. But now wait, Nicodemus, he is truly a wise man, and he didn't understand what Jesus said, and he asked him these questions, so he asked more questions, and we need to do the same. So if somebody's preaching to us, and, and things just don't quite make sense, it's okay to ask somebody and just say, can you explain that? Please, I really want to understand. Please explain it. Don't just say, oh, well, I didn't get it. No big deal and move on. No, go ahead and ask. It's fine to do that. Jesus tells us that we should. We need to try the Holy Spirit or test the Holy Spirit to try to figure out if someone is preaching to us and we don't quite understand what's being said and we're thinking, okay, yeah, right, right, right. Sometimes the preachers even make a mistake. Of course, I've never made one. Never, never. No, that's not true. <laughs> but it's possible. And it's okay to question. So we've learned that. Anyway, so next one, please. Jesus explained there's a difference between being born and being born again. So do you mean be born again okay so what does that mean okay here's my mom she's sitting right there it's a long time ago 57 years ago in fact 47, 47 years ago sorry the, the interpreter got that wrong I'm not that old <laughs> it's just 47 not 57 <laughs> 47 she uh, birthed me I was born so I mean I don't remember it obviously but I'm sure she's not lying to me. I'm <laughs> sure she was there. She ought to remember. I'm sure I've been a pain ever since. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway. <laughs> so I was born. But so, uh, yes, so somebody's born. Oh, shut my up. Now my son's talking about that yeah. now and saying, yep, you've been a pain ever since. It's true. No, anyway. <laughs> okay, enough. <laughs> so I started my life here. Okay, I was born at that point in time. So, how can I be born again? So, Jesus explained to Nicodemus. He told him, born of water and the spirit. Water means that my body has become alive. Okay, I'm now born. But born of the spirit means that when I have decided to become a Christian and accept him into my heart, Accept Jesus into my heart, that means I am born again. And Nicodemus had never been born again. Nicodemus had been so focused on work and, tr and trying to do the works to get him to heaven. But now you need to remember that 16, 16 weeks ago, a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, sorry, okay, a few weeks ago, that how I had been explaining about uh, the, in the law, 969 different rules there are in the, in the law. That's a lot of rules that we need to worry about, but we can't do all of that. But many people believe that the Bible, that when you, the oh, scholars, the people that uh, study the Bible, <coughs> when they really take a look at Nicodemus's life, they think that maybe he was the closest of everybody to following all those rules. That he was really a good, good man, truly a good man. And yet, it wasn't enough. <coughs> Nicodemus had not yet accepted Christ into his heart. And Jesus explained to him, You can work all you want to get to heaven, but it's not going to happen. You have to be born again. Nicodemus was sure that, I mean, that's an interesting thought. It's fascinating. 
truly as I consider that and mull that over, but I just never had heard this concept before. And he continued to think about it. So, the next one please. Nicodemus asked, how's, how's this possible? You need to explain some more, please. So you can see that Nicodemus was extremely hungry for God's word. He wanted to know more. He wanted to understand it. And I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I'm not hungry for his word like Nicodemus. Sometimes, well... I think, okay, yeah, I heard the sermon. Okay, that's good. Okay, good. I'm done. And off I go. And I live my life. But he wanted more. That truly affected me. Jesus told Nicodemus that in a few weeks, oh, in the next few verses, that he should know you should know because you teach the law. He said to them, Jesus said to that him. So he challenged him. He challenged Nicodemus. But Jesus showed, showed him that because he, that Nicodemus was indeed blind to the spirit. You know, it's really sad because Nicodemus was very close to really to the truth, but he was still missing it at the same time. I mean, yes, he taught the law. He taught people about uh, the different verses. But when he heard Jesus actually speaking, and it just touched his heart. Wow. I think that maybe Nicodemus was thinking about himself. thinking about the various mistakes that he'd made in his life, thinking about how he'd studied and studied and studied God's word, and yet he still felt like he was missing something. He really wanted to know more. And Jesus told him, yes, you've studied and studied the law, you've taught and taught and taught, and that's wonderful, but you've still missed the point. Next one. Jesus was helping Nicodemus understand that what? That you cannot get into heaven because you've been working really hard. It's not enough. Your works is not enough. Oh, yes. Is it important to go to church? Of course it is. Yes. Is it important to give money to the church? You bet. Yes. Is it important to help other people? Yes, of course it is. How about reading the Bible? Is that important? Yes. Praying? Is that important? Oh, yes. Yes. But it's not going to get me into heaven. Doing these things is not enough. It's only through the faith in Jesus. That's the only way to get to heaven. So your list today, it's just a little bit different that you have, your note list that you have. I want to encourage you today to take it home. I want you to read it for yourself. And there's a few different questions in there. And I want you this week, I want you to read it, think about it for yourself, and answer the questions for yourself. And it really is designed to make you think. Now realize, I'll, I mean, I will be honest with you. I am really, really tired of just going to church and going home and just going through the day with nothing changing. That's awful. Because that's, that's not the reason we come to church. No. No. Listen. Hearing people are the same way. I'm not saying it's just deaf people. It is, they go to church, they listen and go, okay, and then they go on home. No, that's not sufficient. This thing right here, God's word, it's not for us to be like, oh yeah, whatever. No. This word is designed to change us. And when Nicodemus met with Jesus, 
Now, during that time, from that point on, Nicodemus was a different person. He was never the same from that point on. And if we truly have Jesus in our heart, things should be different in our lives. We should be different, not just the same old, same old thing. We need to be different. So, so you say, okay, Lee, so, okay, I do these things. So are you telling me I don't have to do these things, that I can stop going to church? No. Why do we come to church? Why is that important? Because we love God. We want to learn more about God. We want that deep relationship with God. And if I give money to the church, it's because I'm obeying the Lord. I want to help other people because I want to show Jesus' love. I want to read the Bible and learn more about Jesus. I want to pray because I want to talk with my Savior. I want to give him, tell him the things that I'm feeling and thinking. And sometimes my wife, well, I tell her what I'm thinking and feeling, and she just says, okay, enough, that's enough. She's a kindergarten teacher now. In the afternoon, she's kind of had enough by the time she gets home after working with kids all day long. I'm not so sure she's wild about me giving, telling her everything I'm thinking and feeling. She's probably more like, okay, enough, enough, enough. But when I give, tell everything I have to God, he's never like saying, okay, that's enough. I'm tired of it now. He's saying, more, give me more, tell me more. I want to know more. He wants that close relationship with me. It's really different. So I thank him for that. And so when Nicodemus finally understood, he finally got it, wow, that made sense. And we need to understand it in the same way. We need to have a conversation in the dark, so to speak, just like Nicodemus did, a conversation in the dark. Sometimes in our lives, through difficult times or dark times, right? We need to talk to him. We need to think about people like Gary Lane, the fact that he had, has cancer and yet he's still going. He's had to deal with all the variety of things that happen when you have cancer, chemo, etc., and yet he keeps going. We have to go... He ha- he, we didn't have to go through that, but he has. That's his life. That's a dark time for him. So what does he do? We need to be praying for him. Yes, we need to have a conversation with God in the dark for his dark times, for Gary's dark times. We need to pour out our hearts to him. So what happens in the end? His life will be close. Gary's life will be closer to Jesus's. That's awesome. That's cool. We really need to think through the dark times. Yes, there are struggles. You don't just say, okay, I'm done. I give up. During those dark times, we need to have those conversations with God. And you'll notice that when we draw closer to him, he draws closer to us. It's sweet, truly. We don't like the dark times. Granted, they're not easy. But wow, you will be incredibly amazed at the relationship you will have with Jesus as it changes if we go to him during those difficult times. It's true. And Nicodemus went for a conversation in the dark with Jesus and drew close to him. Okay, next one. Jesus explained more. No one can go to heaven except the one who came from heaven, meaning Jesus. Jesus explained that he talked about the story in the Bible that happened a long time ago. It was in Exodus. I think it was, anyway. It doesn't matter, but anyway. uh, It was when um, the children of Israel... 
they started complaining and complaining against God. And he sent, a, sent snakes to them, and they started biting all the Israelites. And many of the people died. And Moses, he started praying to God and asking him to help them. So he said, okay, I'll tell you what to do. Make a big brass snake and put it on a tall pole and lift it up high. And when the people look up to it, then they will be healed. Why did he tell them that? Because that was the picture of Jesus, just like him being lifted up in the future on a cross. The point was that Jesus was trying to explain that just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, the Son of Man must be lifted up. Meaning, and, and, and Nicodemus was saying, well, now wait, I don't understand. And he said, well, it's going that, well, you need to understand that Jesus would be on a cross in the future and that everyone who looked to Jesus would have eternal life. In other words, they would be born again. And life, and they would have life with him forever. So, Jesus explained all this to Nicodemus. And he really had no clue until he finally, he finally understood and believed and Nicodemus opened his heart to Jesus. And it made all the difference in the world. When we open up to Jesus, wow, what a difference. It can make such a difference. Let's pray. Father, oh, we thank you for showing us all these things in your word about Nicodemus and his story. And we hope that each person here has become a Christian and accepted him into his heart. But if they have not yet happened, if that has not yet happened, we ask that you'd please encourage them to come and ask me or somebody else in the church to, to help them learn how to truly accept him. We thank you for eternal life. And it's in the name of Jesus Amen. we pray. Amen.